In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Returning to the scene of the crime. I always begin my sermons at St. Philothea with a title. Because the lady who uploads my sermons to our website shared with me that in order to upload my sermons, she has to listen to them all again and decide what they mean and then make a title. And it takes a long time. Please, Father, help me. So I started giving them a title. And today's title is The Return to the Scene of the Crime. Because this is my spiritual home. This is my place of repentance. This is where I became Orthodox. April 25th, 1985. That was a long time ago. And I was here, chrismated, and received into the church at the hands of Father Anthony Conyers of Blessed Memory. And my road to this moment began then one Sunday after Pascha. I was at home in my apartment, and God says to me, Am I God or is art God? Because I was living the dream. I had a studio on the Mississippi. I was studying at the University of Minnesota. And that was like a knife in my chest because my identity was, I am an artist. But after some struggle, I said, Lord, you're God. I will follow you. So sometimes we only realize in hindsight, God's providence and direction in our lives. It's hard to see in the moment these days what exactly is taking place. I do a lot of work with campus ministry. I participate in OCF, and I go on campus each week, and Father Timothy used to be the executive director of OCF. And when I go on campus, I set up a little table, and I paint icons, And behind me have a big icon of the resurrection. Now, 99.9% of the people pass me by. And some people stop and talk, but not many. And I began to wonder, is what I'm doing important? Does it matter? It doesn't seem very very effective. And one Sunday, I was serving Orthros, as we did here today, and two, per, two people show up in the middle pews. And I look and I go, they're not Orthodox. They won't last long. But I kept turning around and they were there. And they stayed. And they stayed through the liturgy. And when I consumed the gifts and I went out and I said to them, do you guys know where you are? You just walked into the fourth century. I said, yeah. We're from UGA. I said, oh, I go on campus at UGA. I said, yeah, we know. We've walked past you for four years. We thought you were silly. But then one day we bumped into Orthodoxy and we said, wait, that guy on campus was Orthodox. There must be an Orthodox church nearby here. So they looked me up and they came to church. And last Saturday of Lazarus, we'd baptize them. And now they're Orthodox Christians. So necessarily, I rely heavily on the Holy Spirit to water the seeds and bring them to fruition. I do end up talking to the staff, the dean of students, the janitorial staff, the parking attendants, as well as all the other campus ministries around me. And they all know me. And I explain to them our soteriology, how God 
conquered death. He did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. He raised Adam and Eve from the tombs. He reopened the gates of paradise. He was the only sinless one. He's the only one that could do that. And they all go, wow, that makes sense. And I said, yeah, it does. It makes a lot of sense. So at my table, I have a little sign, and I write on my sign a message of the day. It's a write-on wipe-off board so that I can change it according to the mood of the students. And I say to them, one time I wrote a sign. I said, another day, another dollar. Say it real fast a hundred times and for the next 60 years of your life, and then you die. That's a dream that will motivate and inspire you. Not. So I tell my students, you only get one life. You only get one life and you can trust it to Christ. As it said in the gospel today, follow me. And what do the apostles do? They drop what they're doing and they follow Christ. And we're still talking about them today, hundreds of years later. It's easy for us to get trapped by non-life, by fame, by security, by money, by social media, by addictions. Plenty of opportunities to waste life. But Christ points us in the right direction. He says, take up your cross and follow me. And what is your cross? Your cross are your proclivities, your struggles, your handicaps, your addictions. Don't let any of these things paralyze or stop you. They are not life. They are not excuses. They are not obstacles. They are means. And Christ is the catalyst that turns them into life. I speak from experience. I'm not a rocket scientist, not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I have the greatest life. I wake up every morning and say, oh, what am I going to do today? Oh, that's right. Paint and preach. Does it get any better than that? Take a vacation from what? I couldn't have imagined or created this life. But in hindsight, having surrendered and taken up my cross, I see how it happened. And it all began here with Father Anthony and Presbytera Mary Conieris, both of whom I love and pray for and ask their prayers all the time. So how does this work? It works by us collectively being a local Eucharistic community, by living the faith, Celebrating the sacraments by being the church. We create a place where people can come and see and be healed. And they can come and experience Christ and begin the journey of becoming like him. This is a place where we can work out our salvation in fear and trembling, as St. Paul tells us, yes, Christ is in our midst. And whatever role you play in that process, teaching, preaching, administrating, giving, whatever it is, if it is God-ordained, God-directed, you will be fulfilled your life will have meaning. You won't pay bills and taxes for 80 years and die. You will have lived your best life 
if you take up your cross and you follow him. And you know what will happen? You will bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Father Anthony and President of Mary have populated the world with priests, nuns, lay theologians, faithful Orthodox Christians. How? By following him. Yes, I have returned to the scene of the crime, where my life changed, where it all began many years ago. And I've come to say thank you, St. Mary's. Keep up the good work of transforming lives. Remain faithful and vigilant. Seek the blessing of the Lord. That is the triumph of Orthodox, becoming living icons of Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 